I'm going to be showing you how I do this kind of deeply textured inky stuff that you see sometimes in my paintings. You can see some more over here in these areas. Here's another painting, a newer one in progress that I'm working on, but I've also used this same technique in the black textury bits along the edges and even the little bits of speckle that you see along here and in these areas. To start off, I'm going to show you the supplies I use for this. I have Winsor & Newton ink, liquid Indian ink. It is this specific brand and type that gets this texture result. Secondly, I have a couple of brushes. These are pretty cheap ones, despite how they look. People are always asking me, what brand are those brushes? They're, they're Royal and Linical. They're synthetics. They're fairly cheap. I use them for things where I don't mind abusing the bristles. And I have a watercolor palette with a couple of colors prepared already. I have French Ultramarine and Lunar Blue. By the way, I have done a demonstration of this technique that I'm about to show you before in my YouTube videos in the past. However, it was a long time ago when I first did it, and I wasn't really good with the video, uh, the videography. <laughs> so that's why I'm, I'm doing it again this time. Hopefully, my camera is actually going to be oriented the right way for you guys. That will be that will be better than having the vertical orientation, right? Among other things. So, oh, one final thing. I have my paper with my piece ready to do a little bit of that texturization up here. I have a very rough sketch on here, super rough, because one of the things about doing this technique is it really, well, it really makes a mess, to put it bluntly, and sometimes you end up not being able to see much of your sketch underneath it afterwards. So if there's any really crucial, important parts of your sketch, well, what I usually do is I, I photograph this so that I have a reference to refer back to in case I've obliterated everything. And secondly, I draw pretty darkly the elements that are key importance so that I will definitely be able to see them once I have put all my inky stuff on top. All right, so the first thing I do is I'm going to take a large flat brush. Actually, here's a bigger one. And I'm going to just take some water, this is clean water, and went down the areas where I want to possibly have some of my inky wash, inky texture stuff going over. And then I take my watercolors, and this is not an exact science, there's a lot of randomness that goes into this phase of, well, this whole process actually, this whole thing. So I just grab a, some, some of these colors and I lay down a base color tone for these areas. I'm being pretty messy about it because one of the things with doing this technique is I'm trying to accomplish randomized textures because I love building off of the chaos of pigmentation uh, of pigment just sort of pooling and clumping and getting all weird on me. And I love to use that as a basis from which to then launch the more defined aspects of painting. All right, so I have that. I'm going to dab off some of these areas where I had the birds because I want to be able to see those later. And while everything is still wet, you have to move quickly. Oh, first, I've got to shake this up because it tends to have the sediment settle at the bottom. And I take a brush, go in there, and 
and just splatter some onto my page. Don't need a whole lot. A little bit of this actually gets very effective. All right. Again, moving quickly while things are still wet, I then take my, my water here, which is now kind of black, but it doesn't really matter, and I start dabbing a lot of water. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush because I want more liquid on my brush. And start moving my paper surface around. I've got to tilt it to make the ink run in the right directions. As it runs like this, it sort of clumps and gives you nice little bits of texture. I also just take my brush and flick it. Then I let a lot of excess liquid run off the edge of my page. You gotta be careful which direction you orient your page as you're doing that because if you, for example, don't want any vertical streaks going up, you don't wanna tilt it this way as you're letting the liquid run off. You probably wanna tilt it sideways or at an angle towards the corner. up some of that liquid so that it doesn't make a huge mess on my desk. And if there's portions where I don't want such a sharp edge to everything, I also take this time before everything is dried to sort of dab the excess moisture off of that boundary as well. That makes it easier to blend later with other portions of the painting. So that's a basic technique that I'm using here for this. Uh, there are other pigments and mediums that also can achieve this very textury effect. It's a matter of just playing around with a lot of different things and seeing what happens. I, I discovered this particular ink doing this purely on accident when I was doing large washes across a painting and I noticed how it really clustered and granulated and I really wanted to try to utilize that effect and replicate it and so over time I've, I've been doing a lot of paintings using this and gotten more confident with how I'm tilting my painting around as I'm as I'm applying it, you know, moving things around and trying to get the little blotchy bits into the right sections of my painting. Yeah, you know, I might actually add some more over here because most of it, I think I didn't have enough ink when I was doing my little tilting thing. But, you know, you can just add more and keep going and just uh, repeat the process that I just showed you. And add more water do the little tilty thing and keep going until you get the right kind of textury look that you're going for. And once I get this base, then I let it dry. It takes a while because there's so much water, so much liquid on my page that it does take usually about an hour to dry or so before I can proceed with the next part of my painting. It helps if you can put it outside in the sunlight it's a nice warm sunny day, which I'm probably going to do today because I do have that benefit. All right. So yeah, I'm going to set this out in the sun, let it dry, and I'll show you the
dried results in just a little bit.